Hey there guys, I'm Sonicos, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Last time, we explored Zora Hall and learned a couple different things. For starters, it seems like every Zora in that area is just a little too infatuated with women, if you know what I mean. But more importantly, we also learned about what happened to Lulu's eggs. They were stolen by Gerudo Pirates, which are located here in the northern end of Great Bay Coast. So, we are here to enter the Gerudo Fortress to get those eggs back. So, here we got some seagulls here, which actually do indicate where you need to go. This area is where we need to go in order to figure out how to get inside of this fortress. Hey, hang on. Doesn't this look a little strange? Yeah, that's a lot of these little wooden blocks down here. It's a little weird. But they all look the same, so how do we know which one to hit? You don't. Hit them all. You want to go ahead and dash into these at full speed with Azora, and hitting the right one will reveal a secret passage here. So let's go ahead and swim into this area. And with that, we are now into Pirate's Fortress, sneaking in without them even noticing. As you can see here, this place is heavily guarded. There are four guards just swimming around here with their boats. Well, you really call that swimming? I will be the one swimming here. They're moving around here in their boats. They're motor boats here, surprisingly. This area doesn't really have many things of technology, but I guess powered boats is one of them? Zelda games at times don't really make any sense when it comes to technology. I think Spirit Tracks is a great example. The game has trains. But we're still in like a medieval style time. Yeah, that makes sense. In this chest here, we got ourselves 20 rupees. Not bad. We're full in our wallet now. So that tells me these next two chests are going to be more money that we can't carry. Might as well see if that's true or not. You never know. Maybe one of these could be a singular bomb chew. This game looks single bomb chew chest after all. And this chest over here on the west side. Red rupee. Can't really carry that, but hey, now we have it. Nice camera. <laughs> Can't see where I'm going. Just got a nice upper head shot here, Zora Link. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn around now to fix the camera a bit. Going under this little metal log looking device. Got a chest in here. 20 rupees. That's a big screw. Holy crap. What was this falling off of? This thing is as big as me. That's huge. Want to go ahead and swim up here where this metal bar is. Want to go ahead and start surfacing at this point. But be very careful. If you bought the map here to Great Bay, you'll have access to these white dots moving around on your map. That is where the Gerudo Pirates are. You don't want to be caught by these pirates because if you are caught, you will be thrown out of here. So we don't want to be thrown out of the fortress. Here I'm going to go ahead and put on my Goron mask. And that's because of this switch here. To activate it, we need to use the Goron pound. So let's hit that switch and immediately put back on our Zora mask, because we do not want to fall in the water here as a Goron. If we do that, yeah, it's not going to be fun. You know how that works out. Gorons don't like water. They just die instantly, so I don't do it. Going to go ahead and kill that fish. And there'll probably be another one coming up here. If he does, I can kill him too. There you go. I had a feeling to be another fish. Let's go ahead and go into this little waterway that we opened up with the Goron Pound because unfortunately we can't just go into the pirate fortress that easily because it's uh, a little bit of a tight gap to cross. We have no way of crossing it right now so we're going to have to take the sewer entrance into pirate's fortress itself. I'm going to go ahead and pull that block all the way back. Swim as fast as we can into these wooden panels here. I'm going to swim over here on top because in this little cage we got ourselves a treasure chest and here Another 20 rupee. Man, we're getting a lot of money. We just cannot carry. That's going to keep on happening, too. Going to go ahead and push this block forward. Because now we can go ahead and walk through here. Or, in this case, swim because it's way faster. Turn the corner, and there we go. And we made our way further into this area. Easy little puzzle to figure out. Push a block and pull a block. Doing that's the right combo. Go ahead and go through this door. And in here, we got to be careful because there are bombs all over the place. They're kind of like landmines because if you get close to them, they will explode. But you can hit them, and it's not that big of a deal. Just don't walk directly into that bomb. In this chest, another 20 rupees we can't carry. Man, we're just throwing this money right out as soon as we get it. Hey, would you look at that? It's a piece of heart. 
It's kind of locked in jail. I want to know what that piece of heart did to just deserve hard time in jail. Fortunately, I kind of just nosedived right into a bomb. That's what I'm talking about. You don't want to just jump right into a bomb because they hurt. We go ahead, dive down here again, open this treasure chest, and get ourselves a five rupee. Well, that doesn't feel as bad to waste because five rupees isn't really that big of a deal. 20s on the other hand, yeah, I kind of feel bad. Time I pick up a chest with a 20, then I can't carry. Gonna go ahead and put on the Gorn mask here. It's a little dangerous, but we have these barrels. We can go ahead and just punch them, and they instantly break here with the Goron punch. Otherwise, we need to roll into these things or blow them up with bombs. So I just find it easier to break these with the Goron punch. We have a switch here. I'm gonna go ahead and press this, which will open up that cage. And I'm gonna use the Goron roll to make my way down here as fast as possible to get into the cell with the piece of heart. That makes a new heart container. Nice, that's 12 hearts in total now. Punch these pots to get some arrows, hit this switch, and now we can get out of here. Make it quick, because that switch is on a timer, just like the top switch, so you don't have much time to leave jail. Here, we're going to go ahead and use our boomerang power, and I'm going to jump attack as soon as I throw them. Doing this will get me into the water as this door is opening. This saves me a little bit of time. Well, that's just uncomfortable. I want to stop, not run into a bomb. I'm going to come up here. Because here is some pots we can go ahead and break. One of them has some hearts, which is nice because they keep on running into explosives. Let's go ahead and continue forward. Be careful not to go into this current here, because if you go into the current, it will push you out of the sewer system back into the water where all the Gerudo pirates are. So you don't want that to happen. Here we're going to press the switch, which will reveal another switch for us to hit. Using our boomerangs here to hit this crystal switch. Activate a water geyser. We want to be standing right where the geyser are going to be activating so we can ride it up. I'm going to go ahead and jump over where this ladder is. Kind of missed my jump, but that's not too big of a deal because there's a ladder here we can climb. I'm going to go ahead and punch all of these things here. The crate, the pot, which has some deco nuts in it. A weird place to find some deco nuts. That is a nice little area you can restock on some things. Once we climb up this ladder, I'm going to go ahead and put back on my Zora mask. But here, we have ourselves a telescope. When we look into the telescope, we get an idea of what we're walking into. There's a lot of pirates just wandering around out here. But if we zoom in around this ladder, we'll get a little cutscene showing that you can climb up this ladder, go across this bridge where this Gerudo pirate is. If you do so, there's a door over there. This may seem unimportant for now, but do remember that for later. That is kind of important. I'm going to go ahead and throw my boomerangs here to knock around these bombs. You can go ahead and actually knock two bombs into each other, which if you do that, you can go ahead and explode them. In that crystal switch, will open up this door, so let's go ahead and go into it. And from here, now we can make our way over into the main section here of the Pirate's Fortress. There's a lot of pirates in here. You really need to be careful where you step. But we can go ahead and make things pretty easy for ourselves here. For starters, we got ourselves the hero's bow here. We can use this to our advantage. We also have ourselves a stone mask we can use. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot these guards, making this a lot easier. Because after you shoot them, they will be stunned and on the ground. You can also use the stone mask here to get right in front of a guard and they won't notice you. These are one of the different things you can interact with in the game that allow you to go ahead and go completely incognito and you can hit these guards with your sword. But there is something to mention here. In the 3DS version of Majora's Mask, you actually get the stone mask here. So in the N64 version, you had to go over to Akanya Canyon and you can find the Invisible Man there to get the stone mask. In the 3DS version, on the other hand, they move the stone mask here in the center of Pirate's Fortress. So here in Pirate's Fortress, we can go ahead and make our way over to the center tower here, and then Tattle's gonna interrupt us here. She sees something we don't. Hey, did you just call me? That's strange. I could have sworn someone here just called me. Well, if we put on our Lens of Truth, we will see the Invisible Man here, in the center of the Pirate's Fortress. So, Shiro here has been moved in between versions of the game. 
Reason being is that because in the N64 version, you can get this mask before you even enter the Pirate's Fortress. When you do so, this mask makes things extremely broken. The stone mask pretty much lets you enter this area with no trouble whatsoever. And it pretty much breaks all challenge in the Pirate Fortress in general. So having the stone mask before you even come into the Pirate's Fortress can be a little busted. In the beginning section, you can just waltz right through without any guards noticing you whatsoever which is why I chose not to use the mask up until this point. For the 3DS version to move Shiro here into Pirate's Fortress itself, this is honestly a change I don't really mind too much, simply because it does give more merit to just the stealth section in general here in Pirate's Fortress, making the stone mask more valuable when you get it here instead of just a big cheese factor. So it's honestly a change some people are a little controversial on. I can understand both sides. This is a change I understand why they made. It makes the stone mask not as overpowered in this version compared to the N64 release of this game. But when you collect yourself the stone mask here in this version, now you can go ahead and sneak around Pirate's Fortress with no care in the world whatsoever, as the stone mask works here in the same way as the N64 game. But Shira has to make his escape, and he's just trying to get out of here without being caught by any of these guards, which is kind of hilarious, because he can literally run right in front of Gerudo guards and not get caught. It's like the guy still has his powers from having the stone mask on. But now that we have the stone mask, we can go ahead and just waltz right through this place with no issues whatsoever. The stone mask is really OP in this area. It is absolutely insane of how useful it is. I'm gonna go ahead and make my way up these stairs here, go inside this door, and since we have the stone mask, we just go ahead and slice that guard's leg. And with the stone mask, we can just continue forward. Or not. Halt! Everyone! A rat wearing a strange mask snuck inside. So that's what happens if we get caught. We get thrown out. Luckily, they don't throw us all the way out of the fortress. They just throw us back over into the water section here. So we're technically still in their fort. They didn't really do a good job throwing us out. That was a little problematic. But something to note about that area. We can get in there right now in this version, no problem. In the 3DS version, on the other hand, they lock that door. You cannot get in there no matter what. So, yeah, in the 3DS version, that cutscene we've seen saying, hey, climb this ladder. Yeah, that's really the only thing you could do at this point in Pirate's Fortress because you can't even go into the main room where all the pirates are located. You just can't do it. So let's just go ahead and climb the ladder now. Take out this guard because I'm a little petty. Threw me out of your fortress. Now I have to stab you in the process. And here we go. Now we're into a section that there are no pirates. I've been waiting for you. And did you find the rest of the eggs? No, but that that that's because What are you trying to pull here? If people hear the great pirates have lost the treasure they stole, we'll become the laughing stock. Yes, but Avil, the sea is strangely murky when we were attacked by the sea snakes. <laughs> Silence. That's why the Zoras can't send for any help. Now that the eggs are gone, the Zoras should be frantically searching for them. If we don't hurry, the Zoras will get to them before we do. There are four eggs here now. Hurry, go find the other three eggs before those sea snakes eat them. Understood. Wait! The Zora eggs are the only clue we have about the dragon cloud floating over the bay. If what that strange mass one said is true, 
And if we can get our hands on the treasure that lies sleeping in the temple in that dragon cloud, then we can spend the rest of our lives living the good life. So get a move on and go find them. Now! Understood. This is for kicking me out of your fortress. Now who's getting kicked out of the fortress? You ladies, that's who. No more Gerudo Pirates, they're all gone. And at this point in the 3DS version, that door now going into that main room is unlocked because they kinda need to unlock the door to leave that room. Kinda makes sense. So now we can get in with no guards in sight so we won't be thrown out. So let's go ahead, enter into this room and there is a treasure chest in the center here that we wanna go ahead and grab. So let's go ahead and do so. At this point, we don't need this mask, so let's take it off. And let's open this treasure chest up. We found ourselves a hook shot! Use the grapple item so you can reel them in or pull yourself over to them. Press the C to arm it, then use the control stick to aim. Release the C button again to shoot. So now we got ourselves a handy dandy hook shot, an item returning from Ocarina of Time. This item is a little bit different in this version, because in Ocarina of Time, there were two different versions of the same item, a hook shot and a long shot. This here can be compared to the long shot from Ocarina of Time. This has the same distance shot as said long shot, so this is a very powerful item. If you played Ocarina of Time, you'll be very thankful by that sentence. This here is a shell blade. It's impossible to beat it if you aim for anything but his ligament inside the shell which is kind of awkward to hit. I'm just gonna hit it with my little laser attack. Make that easier. Isn't this a Zora egg? Wonder how we can carry it. How about a bottle? Will that work? I think it'll work. We got ourselves a Zora egg and a bottle. Doesn't look very healthy though, so better have someone examine it quick. Yeah, we'll definitely need to be doing that, but there are three other eggs here. What we could do at this point is we could leave the fortress and go back over to the Great Bay Coast itself, back to the research lab, and drop the egg off in the aquarium. As we were told, that is a good place for these eggs to be. But we have ourselves four bottles, and conveniently for us, there are four eggs located here in Pirate's Fortress. So, we can get ourselves all four of those eggs now. But before we get those other eggs, there is something I want to mention here about this hookshot room in Pirate's Fortress. So I already mentioned in the 3DS version, this room is locked until you shoot the beehive to force all the pirates out. But there's also a difference with this room in the Japanese version of Majora's Mask. So depending on the time of day you come in here, the pirates' visions are drastically different. This is a Japanese-only issue though because they fixed the draw distance of where the pirates can look in the international release and onwards here in Majora's Mask. So in the Japanese version, you can walk into the pirate's room and get caught during the day, which is an issue. You can go ahead and wear the stone mask to avoid this, but if you walk into the same room at night here in the Japanese version, you don't get caught by the pirates because their vision isn't that great. You can literally walk into the room and sidestep around this pirate in the very beginning, to completely avoid getting caught and walk freely into the room. They can still catch you if you go too far into the said room, but you can still waltz in here without the stone mask and they just don't care. Because of this, there's actually a little bit of a speedrunning technique slash glitch that you can do here in the Japanese version. So, if you don't want to force the pirates out of this room by watching a long cutscene, what you can do is come into the hookshot room here at night, use a bomb to push yourself far enough over the room using the Zora mask so you can grab a ledge. You can use the explosion force of the bomb to do a recoil over to the fish tank and then shoot down the beehive in the room with the pirates themselves. So by doing this, you just completely skip out on a cutscene and now you can just go and get your hookshot. This is something they used to do in the any percent spear and route of Majora's Mask when the Japanese version was primarily being used, but since routes have changed, this trick is no longer being implemented in the current route. 
for the speedruns of Majora's Mask. But it is still a cool and interesting thing I wanted to go ahead and point out. Something that's majorly different between the Japanese version and all other versions of Majora's Mask. But now that we went ahead and we got ourselves a hookshot and one of the many Zora eggs here located in Pirate's Fortress, we're going to go ahead and end things here. Next time on Let's Play Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, we'll go ahead and continue exploring more of the Pirate's Fortress, getting the remaining eggs in this area. I'll see you guys next time.